before I uh, hand over the webinar to, to the moderator, uh, to the award winning journalist and commentator Ashok Ramsarup from uh, SABC in South Africa, let me share some uh, announcements. Uh, while panelists are uh, presenting, uh, participants can share, send their questions uh, using chat functions. No, uh, no need to wait. Uh, they can also raise uh, virtual hands during question and answer sessions. Uh, but questions can uh, on chat can uh, stream in any time during presentation as well. Over to you, uh, Ashok Bhai and. Uh, is there any Thank you very from much. Yeah. Sure. Uh, good afternoon from South Africa. I bring you warm greetings. Uh, let me begin. Cardiovascular diseases or CVDs are top killers with 17.3 million deaths annually, despite majority of heart diseases. Um, the, uh, despite majority of heart disease. It is preventable, but it continues to be the number one killer of women, for example. Uh, now, this is unacceptable because lots more action can be undertaken by high burden countries to reduce disease burden and save lives from this major killer. Now, World Health Day is on the 29th of September 2015. Today, in this webinar, in lead up to this year's World Health Day, we have an esteemed panel of experts, Rachel, Rachel Shaw from the World Health Federation, which organizes the World Health Day yearly. Rachel would share more on what are the top messages around World Health Day. We should be focusing on this year's World Health Day. Uh, welcome, Rachel. Um, moving on, we've got Professor uh, uh, Rishi Sethi is a senior cardiologist from King George's Medical University, University, KGMU in India, trained in the Heart Center of National University of Singapore, a distinguished fellow of, of American College of Cardiology and well-respected, um, sorry, sorry, well-respected on the global front, regional and national cardiology societies and is and his latest textbook on intervention cardi cardiology had just been released last month. Welcome, Professor Serti. Um, moving on, we got Jose L. Castro is a new incoming chair of NCD Alliance and, exec and executive director of the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease of or the Union. Mr. Castro, thanks for joining the expert panel, and we do look forward to listening more on how can action on non-communicable diseases or NCDs help save lives from heart disease as well. Dr. Angela Jackson Morris is from the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease, uh, the union, and is a noted lung health expert. She will share more on how addressing one of the biggest and commonest factors for life that the NCDs, including heart disease, can help save lives. Welcome to Dr. Angela. Well, let's kick off with, let's hear what, uh, let's hear from Rachel Shaw of the World Health Federation on what is this year's World Heart Day focusing upon. Rachel, it's over to you. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, okay, so I'm hoping you can see my slides. Um, yes, I can. So I'm, I'm clicking on showing my screen, so that's great. So um, World Heart Day, as uh, you just heard in that introduction, is, is next Tuesday on the 29th. It's the 29th of September every year, and it's the biggest coordinated awareness raising event for cardiovascular disease that, that we've seen to date. Um, uh, as, as we also heard in the introduction, cardiovascular disease, which includes heart disease and stroke, is the world's number one killer. Non-communicable diseases account for two-thirds of all deaths in the world, and CVD alone makes up 50% of all NCD deaths. Um, when we created World Heart Day in 2000, it was with the intention of working with our members to spread the news that at least 80% of premature deaths from heart disease and stroke can be avoided if those main modifiable risk factors of tobacco use, unhealthy diet, and physical activity are controlled. So we're now in the 16th year and we're still focusing on pushing that message 
as part of our goal to achieve the 25 percent the 25 by 25 goal which is a 25 percent reduction in premature mortality caused by CBD by 2025 and that is allied to the WHO the World Health Organization NCD goals um, the World Heart Day campaign itself is intended to encourage advocacy grow public awareness and, and with that in mind this year we have launched a brand new website which is at www.worldheartday.org um, we want to foster behavior change so it's not just about activities people carry out on World Heart Day we want to have a year-round effect and we also want to strengthen the unity of the heart health community a few facts about the campaign this is the largest global awareness and advocacy campaign on heart disease and stroke in 2014, we saw an estimated 10.8 million participants around the world. Uh, that was in around 120 countries. So now we're in our 16th year. It's a unique opportunity to position CBD at the heart of global priorities in health and beyond. World Heart Day 2015 then, which as I said is next Tuesday, so we've only got a week, um, is about it continues our theme of heart healthy environments for 2014 but this year you'll see we've introduced a new campaign image and a new strap line which is healthy heart choices for everyone everywhere so we believe that creating heart healthy environments enables us all to make the right choices that we can reduce our risk of heart disease and stroke and we're using those hashtags on social media so in 2014 we put a spotlight on creating heart healthy environments that's because obviously I gave the stat earlier about at least 80% 80 80 of premature death, deaths from heart disease and stroke can be avoided by controlling risk factors. But the problem we're seeing is, is that the environments where people are trapped, where they live, work and play, um, can often discourage making the right healthy choices. So for instance, if, um, if you're surrounded, uh, if there's no smoking ban in the workplace, so you're forced to breathe in secondhand smoke if there's not enough green spaces locally for, to carry out exercise. All of these things have a real effect on whether you can make those healthy heart choices. So we're trying to create awareness of that and the importance of the environment in making us all heart healthy. And just a few calls to action I'll share um, for this year and then I promise I'll, I'll go away. Um, <laughs> so you can help us to make this more successful than ever. We've got a few um, calls to action. One is to submit, obviously, a supportive tweet um, or Facebook post. We're asking everyone this year to share a healthy heart selfie, which is basically, um, as the lady on the campaign image is doing, making the heart symbol with her hands. And we have a healthy heart wall on our website uh, where all of those images will go. Um, we have a World Heart Day video, which is available to share. And um, we also, of course, want people to join in and promote activities that are local to them and, and there's more information than that on our website. There's an interactive map where you can find out about all the activities in your region. I think that's it for me. There's quite a few pieces for me to share um, after the webinar, including this year's press release, which is now available in six languages. Okay? Thank you kindly. That was uh, our first Uh, getting an in-depth knowledge of what's going through uh, the world, what we expect from the world. Organized all day yearly. Thank you very much indeed, and thank. Hello. Can you hear me, Prof? Prof, can you hear me?
Hello, Prof. Hello. Yes, Ashok, we can hear you. Uh, hello, please go ahead, Ashok. Hello. Hello, Ji. Yes, please go ahead. We yes, yes, it's now we want. Yeah. Yes, can you hear me? We now listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please announce yes. the next panelist. We will now want to listen to Professor Rishi Sethi on what. Yes, yes, sure. We now want to listen to Professor Rishi Sethi on what is the disease and death burden attributed to heart disease and cardiovascular diseases broadly. It's now over to Professor Sethi. Thank, thanks, uh, thanks, Ashok. Uh, uh, introducing uh, Professor Rishi Sethi. Actually, he 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 is caught up in emergency of angioplasty, so he. He is not online probably uh, right now. So may I please request to the next panelist, please expert for expert okay, remark. Can we move on? Actually, can we move on to the next uh, speaker? Rather, um, we now have uh, Professor Jose L. Castro who is a new incoming chair of the NCD Alliance and executive director of the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease, or the Union. Uh, thank you, Prof. Uh, Mr. Castro. Thank you. It's over to Hello. Hello. Hello, Ashok. Can you hear us? Can you hear me? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. I've just pronounced. Uh, I did. Uh, well, get. Uh, yes, actually, we wanted now. We're moving on. Actually, wanted to hear Jose Cast El Castro, who is the new incoming. Well, who's the new incoming chair of the NCD Alliance now to give us the latest on his talk. I hope he's around. Yeah. Can you hear me? Who's... Okay, can you can you move on? Is Dr. Angela Jackson Morris available? Hi, uh, this is Angela. I'm available Hello. and I'm happy to speak now. Thanks, Ashok. Oh, great, oh, oh, great stuff. Okay. That's okay. Let's moving on. We now have got uh, Dr. Angela Jackson Morris. Uh, he's from the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease the Union, and he's a noted lung health expert. It's now over to you, Doctor. Thank you, Ashok. Um, I'm, uh, I'm delighted to speak today. Um, I work for the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease in the De Department of Tobacco Control. However, a lot of my background, besides now focusing on lung health, is in cardiovascular prevention. So if you'll forgive the pun, this is definitely a topic close to my heart. So just very briefly, for the background of some of you who may be not so familiar with what CVD, CHD include. So cardiovascular disease, abbreviated CVD, basically covers uh, two major conditions and which cover the largest proportion of deaths and disability from cardiovascular disease. They are heart disease, sometimes known as coronary heart disease or ischemic heart disease, and stroke. So these are the big killers and these are the cause of a huge amount of death and disability around the world. The key point, I think if there's one take home message that I could make in the um, presentation today, it's that out of all of the risk factors that we've talked about so far, 
the one that stands out as one of the most powerful but also the most preventable is tobacco. People need to eat, people need to exercise, people need to move around. People have genetics that can only be modified to a certain extent, but the one thing that we can do something fundamental about is smoking and chewing tobacco. And trying to prevent that is one of our key tasks. So tobacco is the leading risk factor for CVD after hypertension. But an important point is that hypertension, which is also high blood pressure, is also uh, contributed to by smoking. So if we could stop people smoking, encourage people to quit, protect non-smokers from secondhand smoke, then we will do quite a lot of important work for reducing heart disease and stroke. It's estimated that 10% of all cardiovascular disease around the world is caused by smoking. And given that smoking in total, all of the conditions entirely, kills 6 million people a year, this is something that surely should be a priority. Smoking significantly increases the risk of heart disease for both men and women. And an important point that Ashok made earlier was that it's notable that heart disease in women is a major killer. It used to be a misconception that heart disease affected women less than men. Actually, women are much more vulnerable, especially when they smoke. It's also um, a fact that heart attack risk increases with every cigarette smoked. So obviously, if you're a heavy smoker, then you're twice at risk for a heart attack than if you do not smoke. But a key point as well in terms of uh, encouraging people to uh, quit is that when, as soon as they quit, even hours after a person quits, the body undergoes physiological changes, which mean that the, uh, the body is starting to recover and their risk will start to go down from that point. Another misconception that is very important to address is around chewing tobacco. Often people associate the risks of chewing tobacco with being around cancer of the mouth and cancer of the throat. It's important to say that chewing tobacco also increases risk of heart attack and stroke. And th the reason for this, I'll explain after what the physiological process is. But if you chew tobacco, then you're doubling your risk of heart attack. So if we can get that message over to communities, it's a very important one, particularly in the countries where chewing tobacco is very common. Another important message is that we're not just focusing on smokers. We're talking also about non-smokers, both adults and children, who um, are exposed to second-hand smoke, sometimes called passive smoking. But people who don't smoke, if they're surrounded by other people's smoke, are 25 to 30 percent more likely to develop a cardiovascular condition. Just very briefly to talk about how tobacco causes CVD. Smoking damages the lining of the arteries and additional to this it clogs up the arteries which means that the passage is narrower and obviously this makes it more difficult for blood and oxygen to circulate around our key organs. Carbon monoxide from tobacco smoke reduces the amount of oxygen that you can carry, meaning therefore that we're making the heart pump harder, work uh, more, uh, put it under more strain and work harder than it should do. Nicotine in both cigarettes and chewing tobacco overstimulates the heart in terms of producing adrenaline. This means that the heartbeat and blood pressure, again, are under excessive strain. Tobacco use makes your blood more likely to clot. And again, this puts you at vastly increased risk of stroke and again of heart attack. In terms of chewing tobacco, what happens when you chew tobacco is that it increases the heart rate and your blood pressure, both of which put you in the category of being much more at risk of having a heart attack or even a stroke. And again, smoking reduces exercise tolerance. That means that smokers are less able to do exercise effectively, but again, by um, because of this, they're again um, increasing their own risk of heart attack and stroke. 
the key thing, I think, in terms of what we want to do, how can we change this? How can we stop so many people dying young and unnecessarily from heart, heart disease and stroke? There are important things that we can do that are very practical. The first thing, governments, what can governments do? Key thing is firstly to pass a policy legislation to ban smoking in all indoor public places and workplaces. And there's very strong evidence from the countries that have done this that they can actually decrease the number of heart attacks that happen in that country. Another thing governments can do is increase tobacco taxation to encourage smokers to quit. That we've found from evidence around the world is one of the best ways to incentivize people to stop smoking. Putting up the price just means that it's less affordable. It makes people think before they um, follow their um, addiction and it's very effective. Another key thing which is particularly of interest I would imagine to some of the journalists who are listening today is that promoting heart health and why it's so important that people quit smoking um, is a, one of the most effective ways to do this is via mass media. It's very cost effective and it reaches huge populations. That's a key strategy for governments to undertake. Another um, important group would be what health practitioners and managers can do. The most important thing would be to give brief advice to every patient. So basically to ask the question, do you smoke? Have you thought about quitting? Do you know how important it is for your health? And then to tell them what kind of support might be available. Another thing would be to make sure that the healthcare environment is smoke free and also to make sure that tobacco is not on sale in healthcare environments. This seems like something that would be crazy to happen, but we know, I think, from experience in different countries that sometimes this has arisen and hasn't been addressed, but this is very, very important. Because I think, as we said earlier, creating the right environment where people are less likely to smoke, where they're not encouraged to smoke, and where we create a culture of non-smoking is very helpful for people who are wanting to quit and protecting people from secondhand smoke. The other thing would be to support staff smokers. So we know that some healthcare practitioners have become addicted to tobacco and they smoke or chew tobacco. The key thing is that they do not smoke in the healthcare environment, but also we support them to quit. For individuals, a key thing to know is that their risk, their personal risk of heart disease and stroke will go down even from hours after they quit where the processes within the body start to change. Another key point would be to quit to look after their family, not only in terms of keeping themselves healthy, but also because they protect them then from the secondhand smoke. And as we saw before, increasing the chances of someone else getting heart disease or stroke by 30% is something that many people would consider unacceptable and a big motivation to quit. Communities can support and encourage local smokers to quit and also to encourage the making of indoor public spaces as smoke free and encourage parks, gardens, play parks, areas where people gather in communities to be smoke free. Employers, again, a smoke free environment is one of the key things they can do besides encouraging and supporting their staff members to quit. If we do these things, as we've uh, said in the presentation before as well, we can enable people to reduce their risk of heart disease and stroke. I'll be very happy to ask, answer any other questions to follow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. That was Dr. Angela Morris, who is from the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease. What an inspirational talk. Well, moving on. We just hope uh, we got uh, Dr. Jose, oh, sorry, Mr. Jose El Castro, who is the new incoming chair of the NCD Alliance. I trust uh, he's available. And perhaps uh, if Bobby's available, could tell us also whether, um, where, sorry, it's over now to Mr. Castro. Yes, can you hear me well? Loud and clear. Hello. Yes, Hello. Can, yes can loud you... and clear. Go. Yes, thank you very much. Yes, loud and... uh, Yes. 
Well, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to be part of the panel. I'm sorry I was having some audio problems there before. Mm. Okay, good, great. Yes, and, and I'm pleased to be part of this panel and, and also to represent the um, NCD Alliance, of which I am uh, the incoming chair and, you know, coming up to um, the activities of World Heart Day, I thought that I'd give you an update of, um, you know, the plans for the NCD Alliance to advocate for NCDs and, and particularly help um, uh, with cardiovascular disease. You know, I'm, I'm honored to to assume the position of the chair at this critical moment. Um, the challenges that lie ahead are still uh, immense, as you know. We we all recognize the realities that um, comprise our own uh, sense of urgency to combat, you know, NCDs. Um, we all know that um, NCDs are causing two thirds of the global mortality, and low and middle income countries are ill prepared and ill equipped to um, uneven the burden that they face. Um, the NCDs also receive a very uh, paltry 1.23% of the share of the development assistance for health. Um, this um, is why there's a, a, a great urgency to press on the agenda of, um, of NCDs. We saw, as you know, expanded political commitment for NCDs from the 2011 UN Declaration on, and we saw also opportunity to uh, strive for inclusion on in the post-2015 development agenda. Um, to this end, we have seen some impressive gains in, in shaping um, the structure of the global approach. But as we all know, this has not yet translated into a sustained national or regional action. Meanwhile, the burden and impact continue to increase, especially in low and middle income countries. And of course, we saw the extreme shortfall of funding that jeopardizes our progress. With that in mind, um, at the NCD Alliance, we have refreshed our goals for the next uh, five years and set new strategic directions. At the top, um, you know, looking 15 years out, we are aligning ourselves with the sustainable development goals of one third reduction in premature NCD mortality by 2030. This will be our long term goal. Uh, to achieve that, we set three interim goals for 2020, five years from now. One is to integrate NCDs as a priority in national health and development planning. Two, to mobilize adequate and sustainable human and financial resources for NCDs at all levels. And three, to improve the capacity of NCD civil society organizations and alliances nationally and regionally to um, effectively influence policies on NCD prevention and control. To continue to strive toward these goals, we will focus on four um, strategic directions. And we remain focused on what we as, as a global civil society um, alliance, including all the um, heart um, uh, associations around the world, can do best. At the same time, we recognize that you know, more of the same is insufficient. Um, we, um, uh, the, the goals, are, the, the four strategic directions that I mentioned are the following. First, we have to maintain pressure at the global level through a coordinated global advocacy. In many ways, the inclusion of the NCDs in the, the post-2015 agenda is just the beginning, not the end. Advocacy on these issues will remain crucial if we are to see hard-earned political commitments translate into concrete actions, resources, and improvements in health and well-being for people. We must influence and even drive the future. Second, we must promote accountability. Accountability is an important driver of political progress, and the HIV AIDS and women and children's health communities have demonstrated the crucial role civil society can play in holding governments to account on commitments made. So with building blocks on the global NCD response now in place, the NCD Alliance will act in as a global watchdog role. We will monitor and review progress toward NCD targets and support civil society organizations around the world to do the same. 
Third, it is critically important to build capacity of NCD civil society. Here lies the heart of our grand challenge. Yes, we have convinced leaders of the need to prioritize NCDs and share proven strategies for how they can implement life-saving policies. Now, together, we must strengthen NCD civil society movements at national and regional levels to ensure commitment, accountability, and action on the ground. This is a new focus for NCDA, but something that we are deeply committed to do. And finally, we will broker knowledge. Now that com commitments are in place, uh, all the stakeholders in the NCD response are seeking out to uh, good practice and, and what works in NCD governance, prevention, uh, treatment and surveillance. As an, as an alliance, um, we've reached into more than 170 countries. We will strive to identify and share good practices from all uh, corners of the world on NCD policy and practice and increase access to knowledge and innovations that will enhance policies. You will all be an important part of this great effort and I'm counting on your support um, to help us um, accomplish uh, these goals. Um, you know, very central to our approach as an alliance is our belief in the power of strategic partnerships and um, the um, civil society members of, that work in the area of cardiovascular disease have been increasingly um, uh, important, uh, enormously important in this in this effort. So, um, so I just wanted to give you, a, you know, take this opportunity and and thank you for allowing me to share with you what you know, the goals of the NCD Alliance will be in the next, uh, in the next few years, and I will be happy to answer any questions uh, from you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Jose El Castro. He is the new incoming chair of the NCD Alliance and executive director of the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease, or the Union. What an inspirational talk. In fact, I'm, thank you so much for making a difference in the lives of many, many people for that inspirational talk of yours. Now, we're just moving on, actually. We just hope we got uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Rishi Sati, uh, who is a senior cardiologist from King George's Medical University, uh, KGMU in India. Uh, he's, tra he's trained in the heart center for the National University of Singapore, of Singapore a distinguished Fellow of American College of Cardiology and, and well represented uh, globally, regionally, and nationally, uh, cardiology, cardiology society, and uh, his latest textbook on intervention cardiology had just been released last month. Well, welcome to Professor Sati. Uh, thanks, Ashok. Uh, I think uh, Dr. Rishi Shetty is still not around. Uh, so can we take yes, a right. question and suggestion? If he's around, yes, yes, you go for it, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, there are some some questions streaming in. Uh, so can, uh, in the chat box. So can we take uh, the questions? Ashok, is there any remark? Yes, you can take the question. Yes. So there are some. Uh, uh, the first question is for for Dr. Angela Jackson's. Uh, Thanks for uh, letting us know from uh, that CVD, uh, CVDs are major cause of death for women. But uh, are NCDs and CVDs program uh, gender sensitive? Uh, yes, is the very short answer. Um, CVD is gender sensitive and it's also sensitive to uh, socioeconomic circumstances as well. So basically how wealthy or how poor people are also um, influences what level of risk they have from heart disease or stroke. But I think the more important, bigger message that we need to get out to communities and to policymakers is that heart disease and stroke levels in both men, women, rich and poor communities is increasing vastly in low and middle income countries. So across low and middle income countries at the moment, the levels of these diseases are rising in men and women. And it's something that I think economically countries have will have difficulty 
um, affording in terms of health care, but also at a family level. I think this is very preventable. Yeah, uh, may, may, may I have make an announcement? Uh, may I request to all the participants to put in their questions in, this, uh, in the chat box? There, there are some <coughs> questions coming in still. So the next question is uh, for uh, Mr. Jose uh, in the interacting NCDs, uh, which is coming from a generalist. Interacting uh, NCDs is is, a, uh, is other health uh, pro in uh, is other health programs mean uh, programs within uh, countries need to work together. Will it happen more? Yes, I think. Patients or it's any anything. Yes, thank you for the question. I think that as we have learned in, um, that we have seen the world, you know, galvanized uh, into action around the deadly effects of tobacco, um, we see, um, you know, how important it is to work across, you know, and involve other um, diseases, as my colleague um, and Dr. Angela um, Jackson uh, mentioned before. Um, there are many. Um, it is a risk factor that affects other um, uh, other diseases, and the collaboration uh, among all those professionals, uh, society, professionals and societies working in diseases is um, is crucial to galvanize action and crucial to um, ensure that the political um, uh, commitments are made by the countries. I think that working separately um, makes it very difficult to uh, to work. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, uh, the next question is again for uh, Jose, uh, for you. Uh, as we saw in uh, MDGs that all government uh, were not able to meet uh, global goals. How can uh, accountability be raised so that government uh, translate promises they make with uh, post-2015 global goals into local impact? As, as you know, um, accountability um, is an important driver of political progress and ensuring that um, um, the governments honor the commitments made and the uh, sustainable development goals is crucial to is crucial to ensure is crucial to address in the NCD um, problem. So um, our response will be to um, work um, with the governments, with the civil society um, organizations um, in the countries um, to monitor and review the. Uh, progress towards the NCD targets, and we will support the civil society organizations around the world to do the same. I think uh, someone said, you know, um, only what gets uh, what is measured gets done. So I think that it is why it is important for all of us to ensure that appropriate uh, indicators are developed and that they are used for monitoring the progress. The, the, uh, the next question is coming from a uh, journalist, uh, Balu, uh, from India. Uh, for Dr. Uh, Angela, it is for Dr. Angela, do we, do we need to separate a uh, health education program for prevention of primary uh, risk factors of CVD? Uh, uh, is it possible to clarify on the uh, the question? Is is the question asking whether we need to separate action, for example, on diet, on smoking, on physical activity? I think. Uh, uh, may I repeat the questions again? Do do um, it, it, it is I think uh, about for separate uh, education program for uh, cardiovascular ah. disease prevention. Okay, I think I understand. I, I would suggest, and I think some of the messages that uh, Jose was speaking about just before, are that more and more we know that the risk factors of smoking, diet, exercise are some of the main modifiable, meaning that we can encourage changes in environments and in individual lifestyles. We can pass policies that will help people in relation to these. And we know that um, more and more bombarding communities with individual messages is perhaps less helpful. So integrating um, healthy heart and healthy, um, 
healthy brain stroke prevention messages are, that include physical activity, healthy diet, not being overweight, and also not smoking. Including these as a general healthy lifestyle, healthy heart message is probably more effective because we do know that people, communities, individuals can get overloaded by individual health messages. So we would, we would within a program, we would rank some of the, uh, the order of importance. So we would say absolutely giving up smoking 100% is a key thing, but also then looking at reducing salt, sugar and fat within the diet, taking regular physical activity, we would try to include that overall as a healthy lifestyle. Thanks Angela. Uh, may I request again to the participants uh, that please put in their questions uh, in the chat box and uh, <clears throat> if you, uh, uh, you can also raise your uh, your hands by put pressing on virtual hands icon in the uh, in the display. Uh, so there are some questions. Uh, there are some more questions. Uh, the the next question is coming from uh, a journalist, uh, Richard Sharma, who is CNS correspondent and fellows from Pune, India. Uh, it is for um, Jose. Uh, with with the program, the question is with the program growing attention. With with growing attention towards NCDs and constant effort being put uh, in the direction of highlighting them. How difficult is it is uh, for low and middle income countries to tackle this double burden, communicable and non-communicable of uh, diseases, uh, especially in uh, resource constraint areas? Yeah, that's a very, um, that's a very good question. Uh, as you know, the um, NCDs are causing two thirds of the global mortality. Um, and the low and middle income countries are ill prepared and, and ill equipped to against the uneven burden that they face. Um, so I think it's very important um, for the um, health authorities in, in the countries to um, to um, prioritize. Um, the um, the resources and the uh, political commitment to address the uh, issue of, of the non-communicable uh, diseases. I think over the next um, few years, we know that this is going to be the biggest um, the biggest health uh, threat um, to um, uh, the countries. Um, so it is very important that. Um, uh, they receive a larger share of the development assistance uh, uh, for health. Um, and we are at the Alliance, um, you know, we have considered thoughtfully how to best ensure that um, we continue to uh, uh, assist the governments and in, in providing um, uh, information and, and advocacy so that the NCDs receive uh, an appropriate share of the uh, of the financial resources for health. There is one more question, Jose, again for you. Um, it is from uh, one of the journalists uh, from India. How will uh, CSO uh, capacity be raised to meet NCD goals? What more can be done? Um, the civil society organizations are an important part of this uh, effort um, and we know that um, uh, without their um, active participation and, and, um, and advocacy, it will be very difficult to ensure um, uh, success in, in battling um, the um, epidemic of um, uh, NCDs. Um, we know that you know the, the civil society um, have many uh, leaders that are very leaders are very strong and 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 can advocate and and for NCDs and also um, mobilize action uh, nationally um, uh, ensure that best practices are shared. Um, um, within uh, the countries uh, and also at the global level maintain the pressure um, through coordinated global advocacy. Uh, 
think advocacy on these issues will remain crucial and if we are to see the hard-earned political commitments that translate into concrete action, resources, and improvements in health and, and well-being for people. Uh, we need the active participation of civil society organizations. Um, there is one uh, one question for uh, Richel from, I think, one of the journalists from India. is asking, do we have uh, World Heart uh, Day uh, materials in Hindi and Urdu as well? Oh, no, I'm afraid we don't at the moment. Um, we we have limited resources to um, translate things. We, we did a few limited translations of the press release this year, but we um, we haven't managed to translate any of the content. I'm afraid it's solely in English. Okay, thanks, Uh May I again request to the participants, please raise your virtual hands, and uh, if you have any questions, you can type in in the chat box, and uh, we will raise the questions to the to experts. Uh, there is one another question for uh, uh, I think Angela. Uh, uh, is tobacco industry interference in in CVD programs as well? It is from one of the journalists. I, I think that's a difficult question to, to answer in that um, the tobacco industry we know and um, we know ag again from what uh, Jose was just saying that civil society has been playing an important role in tracking the kind of interference that the tobacco industry makes not in public policy. Are they interfering in terms of heart health programs and CVD programs? I haven't got any evidence to say either yes or no. We do know that the tobacco industry are very, very influential in terms of advocating in communities, with governments, and with other companies that promote other products, for example, that sell uh, carbonated drinks fatty and salty foods. Uh, we know that the tobacco industry is allying more and more to the other areas that, of, that cause non-communicable diseases. Are they involved in trying to counteract heart programs? My guess would be that would be very, very counterproductive in PR terms for them. So I think that their influence is probably much more subtle and with individual government ministers, in policy committees and in communities through their marketing. So I can't answer definitively, I'm afraid, but my sense would be that it would be much more subtle, policy and community focused. Thanks, uh, Angela. Uh, <clears throat> there is there is another question from uh, from a journalist uh, for uh, Jose. Uh, are, are there a specific non-communicable diseases that will get more attention in post 2015 development in India? Are there? Uh, I beg your pardon. Are there non-communicable diseases that will receive more attention? Yeah. Is that the question? So it's in NCDs. Yeah. Yes, but I think that um, with the um, issues of um, uh, you know cancer, cardiovascular uh, diseases, um, diabetes, these are all um, uh, diseases with a, with a high burden and high causes of um, uh, mortality. So they will receive a lot of attention uh, and will continue to be. Um, you know, major issues if we don't take action to uh, curve um, uh, these uh, problems in, in the countries. It's very hard to say that, you know, one or the other will be the, um, you know, the uh, leading causes, um, the, the leading uh, uh, NCDs. I think that we need to look at, at them as, um, uh, as a huge burden on, on the countries uh, uh, together and take um, you know the appropriate action and you know policy uh, as well as um, uh, uh, educational and, and, and through advocacy to uh, ensure that we reduce this burden. Will there be any focus on a specific uh, NCD, uh, non-communicable disease, uh, like uh, any like Alzheimer or any other other specific disease? 
I think that there will be, there will continue to be immunized you know, advocacy increases around these uh, diseases that will uh, uh, receive the attention. We see from the effects of, um, you know, tobacco, you know, a risk factor that, you know, has a, um, an effect on, uh, um, you know, imp impacts many other diseases that there will be continue to be a lot of, um, you know, advocacy and pressure on, on this. Um, but I don't think that, you know, there's going to be one uh, versus the other. Thank you. Uh, CNS uh, request to all the journalists again uh, to type in their questions in the chat box or, or raise their virtual hands to ask questions to our panelists. And uh, if there is any questions, Another question is uh, for uh, Angela, uh, with, with, uh, which is from uh, a, asked by a journalist from India. Uh, with 17.3 uh, million deaths due to CVD every year, is there uh, enough uh, <coughs> funding for CVD's program to save lives? I think the the short answer to that again would be not yet. Um, one thing that we at the union um, are doing some work with, with governments and with civil society in a number of countries on is to encourage them to develop funds, so health promotion funds yeah. that basically use funding from taxation, particularly around taxation of things like tobacco and alcohol um, and use those funds directly for health promotion around key killer diseases like CVD that will fund programs to prevent heart disease and stroke. We've got some great examples in countries for example like Vietnam which has set up such a health promotion fund where I think in its first couple of years of operation, they had several million dollars worth of funding directly from tobacco taxation that they can now use for prevention programs. So I would say that many countries, particularly in low and middle income countries where they have various priorities that they need funds for, it is difficult to get enough funds for the preventive programs. But using taxation of things like tax, uh, tobacco and alcohol means that there is an available source that can put some more funds in and increase the level of prevention work. So we think that will be one of the key things that governments can do to increase and sustain their actions across non-communicable diseases. So in terms of increasing, for example, tobacco and alcohol tax, it will reduce harm by raising the tax itself and reducing consumption, but also it will give a government much needed funds to undertake prevention. Oh, thanks, Angela. Uh, the, the, uh, there is a question from a CNS correspondent from Nepal. Uh, the expert name is not quoted yet, but uh, uh, the, the, the union is uh, wor uh, union work in Nepal to get smoking and smokeless form of tobacco banned from use in public places. Is the, is it happening in other con other nations too? Yes, um, we can. Uh, I can talk from the experience of the union in that we're working across 40 different countries, and certainly Nepal has passed some very good laws against tobacco, which we believe over the next number of years will reduce consumption and the harm that the tobacco is doing. Other countries that have passed strong legislation recently would include, for example, um, Vietnam. Uh, Philippines has passed a good law that will increase its tax and develop a fund. A number of countries in Latin America, so we can see, we can see across the world regions that countries more and more are passing policy, particularly around smoke-free indoor public places, but also to increase tobacco tax and also to ban tobacco advertising. So Nepal is a great example for the region. We are hoping, for example, that the graphic health warnings that they have on the tobacco packaging in Nepal will soon be passed at a higher level in Pakistan, where the government is waiting to set the level of their graphic health warnings. That in itself would do a major thing for um, 
for reducing the level of stroke and heart disease in Pakistan. So we are waiting very closely and hoping for the government to take that step. In India also they are looking to do the same thing. So within that region there are strong moves in that direction, but also across the world. We'd like to see more governments as well in Africa taking strong steps to strengthen its policies. So we know that the government of Uganda, uh, the president uh, signed off yesterday, I believe, if my information is exactly right, that they also signed a very important law um, to create smoke-free public places. So that is a massive step and is the culmination of the work of a lot of NGOs and the government itself. So we congratulate them and the work that they're doing in Nepal. Thanks, Angela. Uh, uh, CNS again uh, refers to all the journalists. Uh, if they have any questions, they can type in in the chat box or they can raise their virtual hands to ask their questions. Um, there is uh, there is one one more one more questions for uh, for Ricky uh, Rich, uh, Richard. Uh, this is from a gen, from a participant named Ananda. Uh, is there any link of the tool for uh, World Heart Days activity on the on the website? Sorry, I'm not sure. A, a link to what? Link or uh, link of the tool for World Heart Days activity on the website. Well, um, if you click on um, if you click on worldwide activities yeah. on the top navigation, that takes you to an interactive map where you can see what. Everyone who's been on our website who's carrying out an event or an activity will have filled out an online plan form and, and that, that populates that map so you can see what World Heart Day activities we have registered around the world. So is that what you meant? I think so. I'm, I'm also not very much clear with the questions. No. Yes, it is something. Okay, great. Yeah. So yeah, um, we are encouraging the way we get our statistics about the reach and growing awareness of World Heart Day is all through the online forms that people submit. They submit a plan form before World Heart Day which gives them access to the campaign materials and then after World Heart Day they submit a report form so we encourage everyone who's carrying out an event or activity to do that and it, and it lets us know um, what's happening around the world. So. Okay, thank you, Rishi. Uh, uh, I again uh, request to the journalists if there are any questions, they can type in or raise their virtual sure hands. Well, uh, uh, it seems like there is no more questions. So, over to you, Ashok, uh, for any remarks and comments. Thank you very much. Bro, thank you very, very much to our experts. In fact, they gave us an in-depth knowledge of what's actually happening on, on the frontiers concerning cardiovascular diseases. And it's very, very inspirational that we are getting, we got uh, such fantastic esteemed speakers. Thank you to uh, Rachel Shaw from the World Health Federation, uh, which organizes the World Health Day yearly. Uh, Factory. Uh, thank you to uh, Mr. Jose Al Castro, who is the new incoming chair of the NCD Alliance and executive director of the International Union Against Tuberculosis and the Lung Diseases Disease or the Union. And of course, not forgetting Dr. Angela Jackson Morris, who is from the International Union Against Tuberculosis and Lung Disease uh, the Union. And obviously, uh, she is a noted lung health expert. Now, you heard you heard everything from these experts. It's now to, it's, it's over to our journalists, uh, our young and and the old journalists, to make better use of what's coming up from the experts to promote World Health Day. Thank you very much to our uh, team back in India. Thanks. Thank, you. Uh, we, Thank you. 
Yeah, we will share a um, recording of the webinar and other materials to the to in next few hours uh, with our with uh, with our journalists and participants. And thanks to all uh, all the panelists, participants, and Ashok uh, of uh, South African Broadcasting Corporation. Thank you all. Thanks for uh, all your time and presentations and remarks.